doing for the body of Christ in this final hour. Somebody say in this hour. Dr. Eric, you can go ahead and um, cut the music off at this time. Amen. So we can go ahead and tap into the joy of the Lord. Amen. Amen. So um, if you would, let's get our um, smart pads out. Um, I believe we have somebody up there working our, our video um, word and um, our media ministry. Uh, we're going to go tonight um, to 1 Kings chapter 10. 1 Kings chapter 10. And we want to find ourselves at verse 4. And we're going to be reading from 4, Pastor, to about verse 7. And I might jump in there at any point and, um, you know, jump in. And you know, y'all know how we do it. So we're just going to start. And, and I want you all to, to get ready. Because God is transitioning you in your mind. God is transitioning you in life. And your life will transport or teleport you into a new place. The old, the old, um, the old flow, the old mindset is being crucified. And, 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 and you that are excited, you that are ready, God's getting ready to reposition you. Somebody ought to say amen. He's killing everything, and I'm going to deal with it tonight, everything that was designed to stop you, to stop you in your God relationship, to stop you in your spirit, to stop you in your mind, God is shifting you out of that stuff. Not only that, I hear the Lord speaking to me now. We get ready to get into this word. Friends and people that came into your life to be a hindrance. God is ready to shift them out of you, to, away from you too. Oh, I know, I know it, I know it. And, and, and don't cry, don't be sad, mad and ashy, because God is shifting some people out of your life. Y'all should have said amen. Why would you want to be connected to something that don't have nothing to do with your future? Huh? Why would you want to be uh, held down and slowed down and boggled down with anything that does not have anything to do with what God has for you? It ain't going to do nothing to be a distraction. I don't even want a business that ain't going to be successful. Y'all should have said amen. I don't want a neighborhood. I don't want a house. I don't want a job. I don't want friends. I don't need nothing in my life that's going to hinder me from what God has taken me. And I'm ready for the transition. Amen. First Kings 10 and 4. Now watch how the revelation begins to unfold and how God begins to speak to us. In this new realm. Read, Pastor. And when the queen of Sheba had seen all Solomon's wisdom. Now here's a queen. What kind of woman is this? She's a leading lady. She's over her realm. She's over her kingdom. She's over her region. She is a queen. Somebody say she is a queen. Now you got to remember now. She's not just no rag shag. Tallywag, give a dog a bone. <laughs> this is a queen. This is a, a chief lady. This is a leading lady. This is a lady that has integrity. She has respect. Come on, somebody. This woman is not just some anything. She's she. We, 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 what we would recognize um, her with in America is um, Michelle Obama. Yeah. What kind of res what kind of um, what kind of, of um, respect would come on you if Michelle Obama said, I want to come by your house? Y'all ain't catching it. What type of um, notoriety and just people wanting to know what made her choose you? <laughs> what made her want to come by your house? Y'all ain't catching it yet. So for a woman of this caliber, a woman of this type of, of respect, to say she's coming to your house and coming to spend time with you put something on you. And so what God is trying to say, you want, somebody say, I want another class of respect and friendships for my life. Now, I need you to give God praise right there because y'all got, you got to get excited about what we're doing because the enemy don't want you to get this. 
The enemy don't want you to get this because this is ready to transport you. I'm telling you. So the Bible says that the queen of, of Sheba, the queen, the queen of Sheba, seen all Solomon's wisdom. She looks at Solomon's wisdom or, watch this, y'all ready? Solomon's know-how. Solomon's ability to get stuff done. And she's amazed. She's blown away because Solomon knows how to get stuff done. And, and God wants to put people in your life that, that know how to get stuff done. God want to connect you with people that have wisdom and some understanding about doing things. Can I get nine people that just give God praise right there? And so God says, watch, Queen Sheba is at Solomon's house, and she see all his what? Wisdom. Say it. Wisdom. And the what? And the house that he had built. She see his wisdom, and she see his productivity. Now, what's get ready to, oh, <laughs> what's get ready to cause you to go forward and to have a different class and have a different aura around you? God's ready to give you some wisdom and some productivity. You're not going to be making those foolish things and things that ain't taking you nowhere and getting you nowhere. Maybe you're stuck. God said, oh, no, I'm about to shift you out of that. I'm talking to somebody. So productivity, you get ready to be able to build something, construct something, have something that's going to cause queens to take note of you. I can see this right here. Read, 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 read. And the meat of his table. And now watch. Not only is this woman seeing his wisdom, not only this woman see the house and the structure he has, Shout structure. But she starts looking at how he eat. How his diet is. What kind of restaurants he hang out in. What type of um, environment he hangs out in. Y'all getting this. He's not a McDonald's man. <laughs> Burger King. And I like, you know, every once in a while to stop at a fat. I don't like it that much. But, 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 you know, what type of restaurants he'd like to hang out in? He's eating shrimp and, and, and salmon and, and steak. Y'all fired up in here. He eating the stuff on the menu that, that costs a little bit more. <laughs> so it says she's seen the meat of his table. Keep reading. I'm going somewhere else. And the sitting of his not only does she see how he eat, she see how his workers act. Some of y'all going to get this. She see what type of uh, people work with him. Now say this with me. Say, I need somebody on my team that know how to bring glory on our work. We need people uh, uh, with us. We need people in our lives that even their work habits got people bringing respect on you. It brings respect on you. The sitting of his service. Read. And the attendance of his ministry. Now, it goes from what he's doing outside. Somebody said that earlier, kings and priests. Not only what he's doing outside, but what he's doing in the house of God. His minister, his ministry got respect on him. So, say this with me. Say it's important. I hear you, Holy Ghost. That the people in your ministry have respect. Y'all won't even say amen. Cer hey! Certain people with certain characters won't join certain church churches. I know y'all don't want to say amen because the people won't carry a decent attitude. Ghettoism and, and, and fighting at the church and arguing at each other. Y'all quiet up in here. I remember hearing somebody have a church, they fighting in the church. What make you think a doctor going to join your church and y'all up in there fighting? 
lawyer, uh, somebody, a business owner, a millionaire. You ain't got no millionaires in your church. Well, what kind of character and people in your ministry? Ah, to the Holy Ghost. I was talking to a woman the other day, and, and she said, is there anybody in your ministry? Y'all won't even say amen to nothing. Y'all say amen just one time. Y'all scare me. Say amen real loud. Amen. I talked to a woman the other day. She said, is there anybody in your ministry? Don't you have somebody in your ministry that, that just really got a lot of money? And, and I, I had to tell her, not yet. If you got a lot of money, y'all come talk to me at the church. Tell me I missed you. <laughs> I'd be glad to know. <laughs> but it's not quite yet. And I ain't trying to put us down. I'm, not trying, I'm trying to say we don't have millionaires here right now. Not yet. Notice what I'm saying, not yet. And so she was talking to me, and, and she was letting me know um, that, and I said, Claude, you know, we do need some millionaires. We do need some people that money ain't their problem. Y'all won't even say amen. See, see, we got to change our mentality. Because a lot of people think when you start talking like this, you money hungry. Are you all about money? And did you follow that person home? They broke, busted, and disgusting. <laughs> and so they got a problem with money because they ain't got none. And they say stuff like, it don't take all that, and you don't need all that. And they don't know the Bible said money answers all things. God wants you to have some money. Because if you ain't got no money, you can't get those things answered. <laughs> so what? Shout hallelujah. So she says, I see the attendance. I see how his ministers, and that word attendance means how they show up. That's another whole teaching in itself. I see how your ministers and elders and, and your, your people your, that's in authority in your ministry show up. Keep reading, Pastor. <laughs> and their apparel. And, woo! I see how they dress. Y'all, come on. Let's just give God some praise. This is, this is a shift in our mentality. So here comes this queen. Shout a queen. Say dignity. Royalty. And she looks in Solomon's wisdom. She looks at Solomon's attendance. She looked at his servants, the people that work for him. She looked at his ministers and their attendants. And she looked how they dress. You draw People, well, this is what they used to say. Uh, this is what they used to say. First impress, impression is your lasting impression. Your first impression is your last. You don't want to be looking like a rag shag. And God was trying to introduce you to the person that's getting ready to take you to your next level. And I know, I know I'm not, we come to work. I tell you, come to work. I appreciate y'all to come on in. Come on. Somebody say, come on. Uh, but this is not the way we dress when we very be in our success. This is our Wednesday night casual service. This, we just in here giving God the glory. But I still look good. It's, it's, it's about my apparel. So the Bible says the queen sees how they dress and his what? Cup his cup bears. Look, keep reading. And his ascent by which he went up unto the house of the Lord. She said the way he went to church. Impressed her. <laughs> Y'all won't even. Listen, you can uh, 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 um, impress people when they see how you serve God. <laughs> Read, Pastor. There was no more spirit in her. Wow. And it said, after she got through visiting Solomon, this is the queen now. This ain't no just anybody. Her breath was gone. She couldn't even breathe. It took her, oh, my God. Look at all that God has done for this man. Somebody shout amen. amen. Well, I'm going to stop right there. We're going to keep it. But I want to say this. I want to give you my subject of teaching that we're dealing with. We're really dealing with the same thing we dealt with Sunday, exceeding glory, exceeding glory. We're talking about 
going to new levels. Um, excellence. We're talking about the spirit of excellence. But but I want to talk about tonight uh, a breathtaking glory. <laughs> when so much glory is on your life. People start losing their breath. I got somebody feeling me in here. What kind of glory are you walking in? When people get through seeing everything God done for you. And they lose their breath. They're just so amazed. When your life is so amazing and all that God has done for you. And all that God is doing for you. That they lose their breath. Crazy that a woman, a queen, not just any woman, she already blessed. She already successful. But she looks at Solomon and say, this man is so excellent. This man is walking in such a level of, of glory. I done lost my breath. And God said, that's what I want to do for the church again. That's what I, do, what I want to do for my people. Y'all ought to give God praise. I want to put such a glory on the church, such a glory on Christ worldwide, such a glory on your life that people lose their breath. When they get finished seeing what God has done, not just impress, but lose their breath. Not just impress. That's one thing. But when God has done so much, that so much glory is on you, they don't have nothing else. They just can't even talk no more. Watch, keep reading. Watch, read, Pastor. And she said to the king. She said to the king. It was a true report that I heard in my own land. When I was I at, when I was in my own kingdom, I heard about all that you've been been doing. And and, it, and, and I didn't got over here and found out they wouldn't lie. I heard your report, and your report is true. Read. Watch. And of thy wisdom. Yeah. How be it, I believed not the word. Although when I heard it, it sounded like it was too good <laughs> to be true. <laughs> when I heard about all God is doing and all God has done, I thought, well, that's too good to be true. Read. Until I came and mine eyes seen it. But I then came over here and saw this. Read. And behold, the half was not told me. Thy wisdom and prosperity exceeded the fame which I heard. She said what they told me, they didn't give you half the credit. <laughs> they didn't give you half the glory. God that you came from. Say breathtaking. Glory. Yeah. God want to do so much in your life. And, then, and I ain't talking about arrogancy. I'm talking about giving God glory. There's a difference when God does things and he gets the glory. See, it ain't about me looking good and me glorifying myself. Thank God he did all that. But I want God to get the glory. I want people to see a young man that say, you mean God did all that? I say, yes, he did. And to him be the glory. She said, the half ain't been told in your wisdom and your prosperity exceed. Excel. Shout excellent. Exceeding. God, you ready to call you to exceed, to stand out, hallelujah, he's taking that, yeah, well, let me do it this way, here we go, here we go, let's go to Genesis chapter 2, here we go, here we go, what he, what the enemy has done, and why God got to do this, he wanted to show you something, thank you, Holy Spirit, let's get to it, go to Genesis chapter, chapter 3, go to Genesis, what I say, Genesis what? Chapter 2, verse what? 16. Amen. Amen. Shout amen. amen. Here we go, Genesis 2 and 16. Read it. And the Lord God commanded the man. Now, who is God talking to? Say it loud. 
the man. He commands the man. He ain't just talking. He's commanding it. Read. Saying of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. You can eat every tree, any tree, every tree. Have your way. Eat. 17. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. Keep going. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Now God commands the man, watch. Y'all watch this now. There's one tree, although you can eat any tree. There's just one tree that I don't need you to mess with. Because this one tree, watch this, is going to introduce you to something you don't need to know. <laughs> Why threw God all over me? This one tree is going to put knowledge in you that you don't need. It's going to expose you, watch this, to an understanding, to, to curiosity. Y'all know about curiosity. It killed the cat. <laughs> Who say amen? Y'all heard that saying before. Curiosity did what? In other words, that cat was being met. He was looking for too much, and he got over there and got killed. <laughs> and so God says that if you eat this tree, which got good and evil, it's going to put you in a place called, y'all ready for this? Death. It's going to introduce you to what? Y'all got to say it. What? At this point, when God is commanding Adam, Adam has no regulate or knowledge or understanding of death. He don't even know nothing about it, Elder. He don't know nothing about no death. And so God is warning him, watch, if you eat of this tree, you're going to narn Good, yeah, you're gonna, it's going to be good. But it's going to have some evil attached to it. And evil going to kill you. It's going to bring you around something called what? You shall surely die. Death. Now, the enemy, watch this, y'all. The enemy of excellence is death. Some of y'all going to get it. The enemy of is what? Because excellence takes you to, ex to exceeding and going beyond. Death calls you to fail. Death comes in so that you can be killed, still stole from, to be destroyed. And so God tells Adam, I don't want you to understand or be involved with death. Because death, y'all, this is powerful. Death will keep you from being excellent. Death will steal excellence from you. Say the, the problem with death, it kills my excellence. I don't know if y'all getting this yet. Death is the spirit that comes to fight against you being excellent. To come against you fighting, you excelling in life. Shout amen. Now watch this. The word die, this is powerful. I looked it up in the Greek and, Greek and Hebrew, and I wanted to understand this, this revelation God was showing me when he said, I'm trying to put a breathtaking glory and an excellent spirit in your life, but the enemy trying to keep you attached to the spirit that was introduced to man called death. And God says, you need to understand death or dying. Now, watch. Y'all watch this. Write it down. Remember this. Die means to die or decay. Now, watch. Say decay. Decay gives me a better understanding of death and dying because God says, while you're trying to excel, while you're trying to go further, the spirit of decay wants to hang around. And what decay does... What decay does is cause you to slowly die. It slowly loses its value. Value begins to flee when decaying steps in. You can buy a brand new 
Mercedes, chief. And if you keep it and don't wash it and just let it sit around, and after, after a while for years, after years and years go by, it begins to or fade. It's all about decaying, dying, losing its potency, losing its glory, losing what it was designed to look like. Y'all quiet. And so the enemy, shout the enemy. He understands that what we are fighting, somebody say, what I'm fighting is decaying. You don't realize it, but you're decaying. You're decaying because God said to Adam, the minute you die, the minute you eat of the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. here, Why? I'm decaying. My physical body, hey, it's getting older. It has a time limit on it. And so we begin to fight. Somebody shout fight. We begin to un- not, the, 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 the not know that, that we're, 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 we're trying to excel. We're trying to go to another dimension, but we're fighting dying. And so God spoke to me and said, son, you got to teach your ministry how to excel. And the way you excel is you got to defeat death. Now, we all know death is, if Jesus don't come back, everybody going to eventually leave this life. So that, that's not the death God's speaking of. Y'all too quiet up in there. What death? Somebody say, what death? Say it louder than that. Devin. You got to defeat the uh, enemy, the, the decaying spirit that wants to come and fight your progress, fight your ability to go to the next level, fight your ability to have ex- excellent house. Well, let me read this, and it's going to make so much sense. Say, read it, Apostle. <laughs> Proverbs 24 and 30. This going when y'all when I read this, some of y'all are just going to slap two devils. Because it's going to make so much sense. Proverbs 24 and 30. Read it, Pastor. Y'all watch this. Put it on I the board. I went by the field. Wait just a cotton-picking minute. Put it up there. They need to see this. Y'all read. read it. I went by the field. Where did he go by? He went by the field. Read. Of the slothful. Of the person that won't work. That word slowful means a person that won't be productive. Shout unproductive. Wow! I went by their field. I went by their outs. I looked at their yard. This is powerful. I went by the field of the person that won't be productive. Read! And by the vineyard of the man void of understanding. And I would by the man that don't understand. Y'all look at me. There's two characters that God wants to deal with that are fighting with decay. What you say, Elder? Slow folk and a lack of understanding. Slow folk, which means unproductive, and the under, lack of understanding means somebody that don't want to learn nothing, ain't learning their lessons. Because a lot of people don't understand just because they don't understand. God said that I gave you knowledge, but you rejected it. My people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Why? Because I gave you not Read it sometime. Read the rest of it. I gave you knowledge, and you rejected it. So I'm learning now. Just because somebody don't understand don't mean ain't nobody teaching them. Y'all won't say, I've been trying to teach my children. I've been trying to teach people. I've been trying to show stuff. And it, does, they, it ain't that they're not being taught. Some of them just don't want to understand. You just don't want to be learning. No, yeah. You that are school teachers, we got a school teachers in the ministry. You, you know you got kids in there. You see they're smart. You see they're intelligent. But they just don't want to learn. Y'all won't even say amen. Shout, this is some good teaching. So we understand it now that, that he goes by the field. And while he's looking at their house and looking at their yard and looking at their house, he sees something. Read, this is powerful. 
And lo, it was all, and lo, it was grown, all with grown over and with thorns. And what else? And nettles that covered the face thereof. He said the whole house had covered up with weeds. What? Weeds everywhere. Passed out when he showed it to me. I don't know. It was so powerful to me. I said, God, this is powerful. He said, I went by the person's house that's unproductive and slow for it, won't work. And I went by them, man, that didn't even understand. And both of them yard looked like it was a weed festival. The weeds had grown up so big and the, 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 the bushes and, and, and the vines, y'all act like y'all don't know what I'm talking about in here. And their house was covered with them. You could even tell what the face of the house looked like because vines had took over. Some houses like that in your neighborhood. I just pray it ain't yours. Just give God a great hand praise right quick. Everybody, this is some good help right here. God said, I'm going to teach you how to bring, bring the ministry into a breathtaking glory. But they can't go there till they first get some instruction. And the first instruction is, you can't walk into no type of glory being slow. You can't get nothing done if you won't learn nothing. He said, I went by the slowful's house. I went by the man of lack of understanding. And both of them had thorns and weeds that didn't grow all over the house. This is another crazy thing about a person that won't be productive. And that won't have an understanding head. It says what? And, and the, the stone wall thereof was broken down. God said that even the walls of the house were falling down. Fenced half down on the ground. <laughs> That's called decaying, ain't it? It, it, it decaying and weeds are taking over. Everything is just broke up. They, they won't even fix it. The door don't even open no more. They don't care. It's just a, go through the other, go around the back of the house. The front door is tore up. <laughs> Stove don't work. They don't care. And the, and the bathroom, don't, the water don't even come on in the bathroom. <laughs> Toilet stopped up and they still using it. Folks don't want to say, man, I'm dealing with a spirit now that's trying to stop your exceeding. It's trying to stop you from being excellent. It's called a spirit of decay. And God told Adam, the day you eat of this knowledge, good and evil, it's going to kill you. It's going to kill your drive. It's going to kill your productivity. It's going to kill your desire to be excellent. And you're going to become slowful or, or unproductive or lazy. And a lazy man or woman won't be excellent. Too much work. Too much pressure. It's too hot outside to be out there working today. They don't realize it's going to be hot for about another two or three months. I can't get nobody to say amen now. Listen, somebody got to do it. If you can't do it, you better pay somebody else. You got to be productive to have money to pay somebody. You got to have something working for you. Shout out, amen. Come on. Come on, y'all. I'm trying to shift the mentality so we can go to this next dimension. God want to put in a breathtaking glory on this ministry and a breathtaking glory on your life. But he can't do that until you first break the spirit of ignorance and slowfulness. I got one or two people to thank. When I first started... I, I started starting projects, and, and, and how many of y'all got projects at home you're doing, and, and uh, things that you're doing to your house, and things that you're doing and want to do, and how many of y'all got some projects you're working on, and, and some business? God bless y'all. Listen, listen, the thing about projects is you can't start it and don't finish it. I start projects all the time, and I'd be like, man, why did I start that? Because now I got to finish it. And it re really messes you up when you go to bragging about what you're getting ready to do. I'm about to do this. I'm about to build this. And, and you go start to get started. Now you didn't got tired. Your money didn't run down. And now you don't even want to finish it. It's called the spirit of decay. 
It's just slowly getting out of the groove. Slowly not wanting to finish it. I'm work this thing is working tonight. Give God praise on this thing. I feel something changing. You starting to understand what you're fighting against. So you're fighting against the spirit of slowfulness. You're fighting against the spirit of understanding. You're fighting against the spirit of decay. Read, Pastor. The next verse says what? And then I saw and considered it well. Uh, I looked upon it and received instruction. Oh! Solomon. This is Solomon. Solomon. Boy, I need nine people to shout glory. glory. Solomon says, so I saw it, and I couldn't stop thinking about it. I got some help in here tonight. I looked at that man's house. I looked at his field. I looked at his productivity, and it stayed on my mind. I saw it, and I started thinking. I considered it. What is going on with this man's house? Have y'all ever seen houses with just stuff didn't float all, grew all over the house? <laughs> old rotten cars in the yard and old shovels and Bike six ain't nobody going to ride ever again, and it's still out there. Decaying. And the weeds and thistles and stuff is growing up all over. And, 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 and you look at it, and the, and the yard ain't cut. Doors is falling off the house. The house need to be painted. And you're talking about, I'm going to be excellent. And I'm going to give God glory. God says, I'm trying to get your understanding so you can do it. He said, I saw it, considered it well. I couldn't stop thinking about it. I looked on it, and here it comes. Y'all ready? And received instruction. The way they treated their house taught me how to do mine. The way they do their business taught me how to do my business. The way they handle their life taught me how to handle my life. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Because they weren't doing it, it taught me I better do it. Because they're not doing it, theirs is falling apart. Then I better get myself up and train myself and receive instructions. You better do it, especially if you want some glory on your life that when Queen Sheba show up, she lose her breath. She ain't going to lose her breath, and you didn't let all this go on. Millionaires and successful people ain't going to come to your house and come to and, and, and check out your business and check out your progression and, 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 and things are falling apart and decaying and you just ain't got your business together. Pastor, you still talking about this? I might be on this a little while. Why? Because God said, I'm, I'm trying to put glory on this ministry. I'm trying to cause this church to excel and you can't excel with the same mind. If your mind is stuck, you can't move. And first, you got to understand what's the problem. Why ain't God blessed me? Why ain't things working for me? Why ain't things turned around for me? Well, receive instruction. Oh. Yeah. Why are my bills behind? Why my house like, like they have? Why God won't give me a house like that? Why God won't bless my business like that? Why God? Because you ain't receiving instruction. Even a sinner is excelling if they use instructions. Y'all, one person claps. God ain't, it ain't God being unfair. God has rules. God has principles that are already set in motion. What goes up must come down. If you think you don't believe it, go up there and jump. See, don't you, see, don't you come down. I'm saved. I pray. I give tithes and offer. Go jump off the building, and we'll see that the law works for everybody the same. A sinner jump off, he's going to splat. You jump off, you're going to splat. The devil told Jesus. The devil thought Jesus was retarded. The devil thought Jesus was retarded. He told Jesus, jump off this mountain. And, and it, said, it said, the scripture said that he's given his angels a charge over you. And they'll catch you, at least you dash your foot against a stone. And Jesus said, you dumb devil. It also says you don't need to be playing with God either. Don't be tempting God like that. If I'm going to do something stupid trying to see what God's going to do, I'm going to follow the same results as anybody. It's a law. I'm going to be playing. These snake people did. I've heard a man tell me, I went to one church, a Pentecostal church, and they were had snakes, and they were picking up snakes. I said, they all foolish. They all fools. You don't play with snakes. Come on, somebody. 
talking about we're going to see if God going to keep us from the snake bite. You're going to go get better rush him to the hospital because he's about to die. Shout the same rules. God says the sun shines on the just and uh, it rains on the just. If it start raining, if we saved or not saved, we're going to get wet if we don't have an umbrella. Some good teaching right here, y'all. So what are you trying to say? Don't start judging God. Y'all catch this, really. Stop judging God because it seems like God ain't blessing you and other people getting blessed. Why ain't I here? Why ain't mine working? Why that? And you sitting around mad at God because you haven't received instruction. And some stuff God said is all you got to do is open your eyes and look. I just saw their house. And Rigger figured it out, oh, I better get mine together. You ought to be able to look at some people's business and say, oh, I need to do that. I need to do different. Is this good teaching or not? You should be able to look at somebody's ministry and learn from it. Y'all stop being mad at God. God, it seems like I ain't maturing. You better learn what to do. God, you ain't opening doors. You better learn what to do. Somebody say amen. This is good. I feel like angels are clapping or something in the atmosphere. I feel like angels are clapping in here. <laughs> okay, Pastor, what, what verse was that, 32? Mm-hmm. Keep reading then, shoot. Yet a little sleep. Oh! A little slumber. Oh! A little folding of the hands. Oh! <laughs> a little sleep. A little laying around slumber means to lay around, sluggish. And a little what? of the hands to sleep. And a little got to go back to sleep. <laughs> See, folks don't want to hear. <laughs> First of all, you already been to sleep. <laughs> you already sitting around. Now your intentions are, I need to take another nap. <laughs> Y'all won't say nothing in here. Is this good teaching or what? Is this Bible or what? Is this what's keeping us from excellence or what? Little sleep. You already been to sleep. <laughs> Little sitting around. You've been sitting around now. Now you folding your hands. It ain't doing nothing. So you can go back to sleep. Y'all act like y'all know nobody. Didn't, and I hope I know it ain't you. <laughs> if you've been doing nothing in your life but sitting around and sleeping, read the next verse. So shall, so shall you be broke. So shall you not have any money, any success. Ain't y'all girl, I'm teaching that. God said, if that's the way you carry your life, sleeping, sitting around, folding your hands, you're going to be broke. See, people don't want to hear this. We want to hear, God going to do it. Yeah, God going to do it anyhow. You're going to be blessed anyhow. You're going to be successful anyhow. And you go back home and go to sleep. You, you sitting around wanting it to happen and you slumbering and sluggish around and, and you ain't got no productivity to your life and you mad because you ain't got no money and you judging people that got money because they just bought another car. He don't need no another car. Shut up. He working for it. Stop being mad at other folks because they can go home and you can't break for them. You need to get out of that house and be productive and get out the bed. Get off the cha couch and get out that chair. So shall your poverty, your brokenness, come on one, come as one that what? Travelleth. God said you're going to be broke and it's going to be like you're pregnant. You're going to be broke out of money. And before you realize it, you need money, but it's going to be like pregnancy, like, a, like you're going to have a baby. And you need money right now. When you, when you need money right now, God says you go, it's going to come on you like you're in labor. You're going to need money so bad you're going to be in pain. You need some money right now. I wish I had some money right now. I wish I had some money right now. See, if we won't, won't even go. Need some money right now, and it's like labor pain because you ain't got it, and it's there. 
Well, I need some money right now. I need something to happen for me right now. God, God, I need you right now. And God said, no, you've been folding your hands too much. You slept too long. You ain't got a job yet. Oh, don't like me tonight, y'all. Come on, help. Thank you, Sister Elder Wanda. Somebody help me in here. I just see her shaking her hand in agreement. I'd love somebody to be in agreement. This thing is working. Look, that ain't me. I bet you you know somebody it is them. And you need to be learning from this because God's trying to take you to another level. So shall thy brokenness, poverty, come as one that is pregnant and about to have a baby. And thy won't as an armed man. It's going to come on you like an armed man, a man that's in war. All of a sudden, it happens. I need some money. What did you do with your money? Well, I don't have none coming. But then poverty going to catch you unaware. This is good teaching tonight. God says the kingdom is going to come. But I'm trying to prepare you that you can be, when decay starts coming, you can win. You can excel. When you get your sitting right and all that stuff that Queen Sheba seen Solomon had, he, he had it all working. And it was a breathtaking gift. Shout hallelujah. Well, let's deal with this. 1 Corinthians 15, 25. I got a few more minutes. I'm going to be done. Give God a hand, praise if you like this teaching. It's helping you and it's showing you anything. If you get anything out of it. Watch this. 1 Corinthians 15, 25. Read, Elder, Pastor. For he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. Now, he's talking about Jesus. He's got to reign until he defeat every enemy. Say, Jesus must reign until every enemy is what? Under his feet. Now, verse 26. Check this. Read. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. <laughs> the last enemy that Jesus will destroy is the same thing that's been taking men out. Death. Decaying. The spirit of destroy. The battle of not being able to go forth. The battle of not being able to break through. The spirit of decaying. The spirit of, of death. Die. Jesus says the enemy that has to be defeated. Y'all ready for this? Is you got to defeat death. God says the reason you've had to fight to get everything in life and you had to learn and you had to get some wisdom and you had to learn how and, and, uh, and, and figure out how to stay in this glory place and stay where you are. You've been fighting death. Come on, say amen. And a lot of people don't understand. The reason you feel like not going no further, the reason you feel like quitting, the reason you don't want to put no more energy into it because the spirit of death is fighting you. And you think death means dead in the grave and can't, you know, no, nah, death means trying to keep you out. Death means trying to make you not want to fight no more. That's what the enemy does. He makes us stop fighting. Then you start settling. I'm just going to stay over here. I'm just going to, I ain't nobody going to never help me. I guess I'll never have a better job. I guess I'll never have success. I guess I'll never be there. And you start dying or decaying slowly, getting out of it. Starting to feel like I can't get there. I can't have it. I can't accomplish it. And the enemy says, and God said, that's the last enemy. That's your last battle. Look, you, 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 you could have got there, but death got you. Somebody getting it. Look, look, I'm here to tell somebody, get your dukes back up. <laughs> tell death you can't have me. I'm not going to be broke. I'm not going to be in a mess. I'm about to get my house in order. I'm about to get my finances in order. I'm about to get myself in order. And I'm about to defeat this spirit that's trying to decay my life. I got 
Now, somebody's starting to feel me now. I know you struggle. I know it's a battle. I know you're fighting right now. The enemy trying to kill you. It's called decay. It's called death. God, the one said it. The day you eat both knowledges, it's going to kill you. And man didn't realize that he died. How did he die? Oh, God, I feel like laying on the floor this morning. What happened? Watch this. What happens after they ate the fruit? What happened to that garden? Thorns and thistles started growing. The very thing that happens to your yard. The very thing the man said, I went by the slowful house. I went by the slugger's house, and the thorns and thistles were going crazy. Death showed up. That's all about it. Somebody getting this revelation. And so what you're fighting now, everybody look at me. What's fighting you now is death. Something trying to grow up in your spirit to make you quit. Something trying to grow up in your spirit to make you not want to fight no more. Something trying to choke the life out of you. The Bible says that thorns and thistles is what the word finds falls on the wayside. And they get choked out of you. Why? Because the enemy don't want you to grow. The enemy don't want you to birth glory. I don't know who's getting in. Hallelujah. The enemy don't want you to birth glory. Because he know when you birth glory, you're going to give God the glory. And then, and, and then queens are going to start coming around. And, and the big dignitary, the Bible said that God placed Daniel over the prince, presidents and the princess. God placed Daniel over presidents and princes. Those are dignitaries. God want to place some of you all with dignitary. See, some of you don't even think it's you. You just sitting there looking at me like, believe, 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 that's all for it. You, know? you don't realize that God is setting you up, even though you, because he's, he's using your tactics. He's using your discipline. He's using your order. He's using the way you do business, the way you carry yourself to set you up. The Bible says your gift will bring you before great men. But a gift that hasn't been sharpened and polished won't bring you before nothing. You ever seen some people gifted and they can do some amazing things with it? And you see some people got a gift, but they can only do so much. They won't practice. They won't rehearse. They won't perfect it. Some people can get up and sing and, 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 and do great things with their gift. Some people can play past other people. Some people can play, can play three notes. They never been trained, but they had a gift. The, what have, why the one person can play three notes and, and it's only go so, so far on the, uh, on the keyboard or, or, the, or the instrument, and the other person can go up and down? Because one have taken their gift to the next level. And their gift going to make room because somebody looking for somebody that can play like that. Don't you realize when Saul was fighting the evil spirit and God said, the Bible said, God let an evil spirit fight Saul. It says that David was chosen and they chose David because he was skillful on the harp. He knew how to play well. He saw that nobody coming that can't play. It would have let that spirit tear him up. You get somebody that, that an unperfected gift, they're not going to kill the enemy. They're going to increase it. Amen. Say amen again. What are you saying, Apostle? God is getting ready to take you to the next level. You're getting ready to excel in the spirit of excellence. You don't hire people that don't have excellence. You hire those back leg, back leg, backyard, uh, back leg, uh, Jack legs, mechanics, jack leg workers, and you mad at them because they half doing it. They wasting your money. But you don't want to hire them because you didn't want to pay for the excellence. Y'all ain't got to say, man, I'm saying something. You get what you pay for. That's my mom used to tell me all the time. You get what you pay for. Talking to one of my, my leaders the other day, said, I want to get some different chairs. I said, well, you might have to pay for the next level because the, the, the one chairs ain't made to last about three or four years. I won't say amen. 
If you go pay a little bit of money, you get a chair that's been for the last 10, 12, 20 years. Some of them live, go, you pass it on to the next, and it's still gone. Your mama leave it to you, and it still look new. My mom had a set furniture they had made, and they spent big money for it, and she cherished it. She said, I want it in your house because you, you got the house for it and set up for it, and she gave it to me, and that house looked like I, we had it made. It looked still brand new. Y'all want to say amen because they paid for it. They put money into it. They invested. They invested this value, and she knew it was like that. And she said, I got to put this in the right house. Nothing against nobody else. See how see we let it, you can't let emotions mess up glory. You know what God don't do? God don't play with you or care about your emotion. You be crying and showing out, God still don't do nothing. <laughs> mad, 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 God don't care. It's like, okay. You ain't shifted until you get some instruction. <laughs> You're not going to the next level until you learn from this level. Ain't, you, ain't it amazing that God said you go from glory to glory and from faith to faith? In other words, God said there's going to be some levels. You be tripping all you want to. And he said every man going to live according to his faith, not nobody else's faith. The apostle got all kind of faith. Well, you better get it then with him. You better get up there with him. My mama got all kind of faith. Well, you better get with him. Because until your faith get there, it ain't going to work for you. And one thing I've learned, I got to quit, y'all. I got to quit. One thing I've learned, watch this. You can't put somebody in your faith level and expect them to match. Y'all won't say amen. You, you try to stick them in there and do everything you can, and you come back, they still ain't making it because they didn't have faith for that. I don't care if it's your child, your friend, your cousin, Pookie, Shanae, no matter who it is, if their faith ain't there, they can't live there. You walk according to your faith. We walk by faith and not by, you can live in a place by faith if your faith is there. You go getting into something your faith can't handle, you'll lose it. Because you can't walk in it. Is this good teaching or what? can't walk in a dimension or a rim that your faith ain't in. You'll mess around and lose it. And I'm not saying this to hurt nobody. I'm saying this so God can, you can let God increase your faith. You know the disciples told Jesus, increase our faith. The disciples, disciples told Jesus, increase our faith. Because they wanted to be able to walk on that level. Let's see what he's doing. This is my last one. I'm done. Job uh, 8 and 7 chapter. If you're getting anything tonight, clap your hands, it's awesome. <laughs> Breathtaking glory is what God's ready to place on his, on his, and you notice the word I use, believer. Job 8 and 7, it's on the board, 8 and 7, read it, Pastor, I'm done. Though thy beginning was small, yet thy latter should, what? Yet thy latter end should greatly increase. Look at this. Look, look, y'all. I'm finished. God ain't tripping because you said started small. God ain't got no problem with you because you ain't where somebody else at. God ain't got no problem with you because you ain't living or uh, uh, walking out. Uh, your business ain't. God ain't tripping. You stop tripping. Stop. Don't compare yourself to nobody else. You just get this scripture in your spirit. I may be small now, but I should. <laughs> There's a powerful word. Though your beginning was small, yet your latter end, what? Should. should. That's the word. The word is should. I need somebody to shout, I should be increased. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I feel glory on that, Elder Bob. God said you should be. I don't care how small you are. Look how small you are. It's just your beginning. So I, God said, I said, God, now why do you want me to put this out there? And I got to quit. Why do you want me to put this out there? Why, why, why are you giving me this scripture, Holy Ghost? Now watch this. I said, God, why are you giving me this to end this thing tonight? He said, because when I spoke the day that you eat the, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you're going to die. 
And so I had to give you something to get you out of there. Hallelujah. So God said, although I spoke you're going to die, if you eat the knowledge of good, I got to give you something that caused you to increase. Because decaying is to take you out, but increase is to take you over. Somebody should have praised God on that. Decaying takes you out. Dying takes you out. Increase puts you over. And God never leaves us in a dead place. Shout hallelujah. God never leaves you with a word that's going to cause you to die. God said, I got to give you something to tell the people that's going to get them to understand. Although they're fighting death. And although they all, we all have sinned and come short. And although man have fallen, Adam failed, man is in a fallen state. I've got to give you a word to cause you to increase cause you to go forward. And then you say, but God, my, my small, I'm in a small place. I'm starting small. No problem. God says, no problem. Although your beginning is small, you should increase by the end. And that, he did say greatly, that is. Not just increase, but a great increase. Come on and give God some good praise. That's, I'm done. I don't. Give God the glory. Give God the glory. Bless you, Jesus. Amen. Wasn't that good? A breathtaking glory. This is what God's going to place on your lives. Amen. Just lift your hands. I want to pray for you tonight and as we prepare to, to give and sow. And believe God, you that are watching tonight, you might want to sow a word on this word. Sow a seed on this word. Put ways to give up on the board if you would. You might want to sow into this increase and sow into this, 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 this word that God has released about breathtaking glory. Father, I pray for the people of God. I pray in Jesus' name that this word of breathtaking this word of increase, this word to get us out of the fight of death, the last enemy, the fight of decaying, the fight of the enemy, of things designed to keep us down. And we got to work by the sweat of our brow. But you said if we work, we're going to increase. If we be productive, we're going to bring forth increase. Not just increase, but a great increase. So we give you the glory, Lord Jesus. And we give you the praise. Because you're worthy. Oh, I feel that right there. He's worthy of the praise. Can we give him a worthy praise right quick? Y'all sow your seeds. Get your seed, Christ Worldwide. Listen, streamers, we love you. We appreciate you. Don't stop streaming.